Hey guys, Jessica here with the Pet Parenting Reset. Thank you for joining me today. We are talking about diarrhea protocol for dogs. This is dog specific. I am actually going to be doing another video if you are looking for a diarrhea protocol for cats. So it's gonna come out in a couple of weeks. So depending on when you're watching this video, make sure you are subscribed. Go to my channel and search for diarrhea protocol for cats if that's what you're needing. Today we are talking about dogs. So here are some ground rules for do you need to go to the vet yet or not? If your dog has had diarrhea for more than 48 hours and maybe they're also vomiting, yes, you need to go to the veterinarian. If your dog is refusing to drink or eat for 48 hours or longer, hopefully not longer, this is also something you need to get to the veterinarian for. Under 48 hours, dogs will sometimes self-fast that's not really a huge issue. More than 48 hours, we do wanna see the veterinarian. If your dog is lethargic, absolutely 100% get to the veterinarian right away. You also wanna monitor your dog for dehydration. So you're gonna to wanna to check their gums to see if they're dark or tacky. And if they are, then your dog is more than likely dehydrated, of course. It would be wonderful if they would just drink a ton of water, but you may need to go to the veterinarian to get IV fluids for that as well. Contact your veterinarian, let them know what's going on, and they'll advise you. So before I get into a lot of the specifics, I wanna just give you a brief overview of what I do when my dog Kim has diarrhea. It happens every once in a while. There's, there's a lot of reasons, stress being one of them, that your dog could have diarrhea. And we'll talk more about that, all of the reasons why your dog could have diarrhea in just a minute. But it happens, right? And we, I don't panic immediately if my dog has diarrhea. Instead, what I do is I will fast her for 12 to 24 hours. And when I fast her, um, that means no solid foods. I will often give her some goat's milk or a bone broth. Bone broth is going to be specifically made for my dog or my cat um, because it's not going to be made with onions. A human bone broth, that's a weird way to say it, a bone broth made for humans <laughs> um, will often use onions when creating the broth and that is not something that we can give to our pets. So it is a specific for your pets bone broth. Uh, I like to make my own and if you're interested in that, there are videos on my channel about how to do that. So during the fast, my dog may not get solid foods, but she'll still get nutrition from a liquid like a raw goat's milk or a bone broth. When I do reintroduce solid foods to her, generally I'm going to make a really easy to digest meal for her. I'm gonna cook up some ground turkey. I'm gonna add in either sweet potato or pumpkin. It is. It has to be 100% pumpkin. Um, don't buy the pumpkin pie mix. That is not good for our pets. There is a distinction there, um, but that is generally what I will give her for uh, a day, maybe two. To and, and all the while I'm monitoring her bowel movements so that I can see how she's progressing, if things are getting better, if things aren't getting better, if they don't get better, like I was telling you earlier, in about 48 hours, then I will consult the veterinarian, but generally it does go away within a day or so and she's back to normal. And then we can resume her normal meals, which, hint, hint, normal meals should be fresh whole foods. If you're feeding kibble, you definitely wanna to go to my channel and check out some of the playlist on why you shouldn't feed kibble to your dogs and why, uh, transitioning to a raw food diet, all of the wonderful things that I talk about all the time. If you are new to the channel, you may not have heard that from me before, so definitely go check that out. That's personally what I do with Kim. It has never failed me, but let's talk a little bit more about some of the reasons why your dog could be uh, experiencing a bout of diarrhea. Um, they could have gotten into something they shouldn't have, something out of the garbage can or even something lying around the yard or the house or on a walk that is upsetting their digestive system. They could have inflammatory bowel disease. Pancreatitis also causes diarrhea. An incorrect diet will also cause diarrhea, uh, which we I just mentioned about that. So make sure you are going back to my channel and going through the playlists about kibble and feeding your dog and dog food and all the wonderful things. Um, stress, like I said earlier, stress can cause diarrhea. Parasites in the body can cause diarrhea. Viral infections, bacterial infections, uh, endocrine disease, liver disease, kidney disease, drugs or toxins. Maybe your dog got into something in the environment they shouldn't have or even pharmaceuticals. Um, I was just talking to a friend the other day, like I feel like you'd be really hard pressed to find any pharmaceutical that doesn't have diarrhea as a side effect. Like it is just a common, we know this to be true, almost all drugs have the side effect of diarrhea. So 
That is another reason why it's really important to be in contact with your veterinarian if diarrhea persists with your dog. And I would absolutely get in touch with your veterinarian if your dog is experiencing chronic diarrhea. So even if you go through the protocol and you can get your dog over the diarrhea, but then they go right back into it, um, or it's happening monthly or even bi-monthly, or if it's just, look, I'm, you know, every dog is different, right? So every protocol may need to be adjusted a little bit differently, but my dog, Kim, she may experience diarrhea mm, a handful of times a year. And to me, that's not too bad. To her, that's not, I mean, I, I've been living with her for seven years, so I understand and I pay very close attention <laughs> to her poop. And that is just something that us crazy pet parents do, right? So I know what's normal for her and what's not normal for her. And chronic diarrhea is an issue. If for nothing else, dehydration. But then again, it is often uh, an, a symptom of something else going on in your dog's body. So you definitely want to be consulting with your veterinarian about it. In fact, to me, chronic diarrhea would, my number one flag would go to irritable bowel disease. So you definitely want to be um, consulting with your vet and trying to figure out what underlying issue is going on with your dog. One other note about diarrhea that I do want to throw in here is that if your dog is dealing with some chronic issue, and your vet recommends a prescription or veterinary diet, uh, definitely, I will link in the description below a podcast that I recently did. Um, I, actually, I'll put the video because I did have slides in this particular uh, podcast episode where I go through prescription diets and compare them to regular diets from the same companies and kind of show you a little bit how to, how to dissect and read a pet food label because in my opinion, prescription diets are not always what they are cracked up to be. And have, being educated and having uh, thoughtful, meaningful, knowledgeable conversations with your veterinarian is so important in this area. I would highly recommend if your veterinarian recommends a prescription or veterinary food to first say thank you for the recommendation. I will look into it, look into it, come back to your veterinarian with all of the education you possibly can, have that conversation with your veterinarian saying, I understand that you are recommending this, but this is what I'm noticing. Can you explain it to me um, why you're still recommending this food? And granted, if you go back and listen to that podcast, there are reasons behind it. But, and if you, if you check out Dr. Judy Morgan, who I highly recommend anybody follow that has a pet, she is a very big proponent of using fresh foods in place of or alongside therapeutics. And one way that she promotes this is by using fresh whole foods in the diet instead of these veterinary or prescription diets because it is far better, um, far easier for the dog's body to actually obtain and utilize the nutrients from fresh foods. There's so many reasons. Go check out that podcast episode and you will understand a little bit more. It's an hour long, but believe me, you are going to want to have all of this information uh, on board with you to be able to read the ingredient labels and have that educated conversation with your veterinarian. So even if we are looking to add uh, more fiber to your pet's diet, if we were doing that with a prescription or veterinary kibble product, they're using subpar ingredients like sawdust and plant fiber to do that. Whereas you can instead feed really high fiber foods, dark leafy greens, pumpkin, things like that, sweet potato, high fiber vegetables in general to increase the fiber in your dog's diet while not putting all of the negative things in your dog's body that come along with feeding a kibble product. If you do have a dog who is very sensitive and you have just gotten to the point where you're like, I need to figure out how to cook for my dog, one thing I do recommend, actually there are two veterinarians that I recommend. First of all, Dr. Judy Morgan has a couple of books, Yin and Yang Nutrition for Dogs, is the very first one that I recommend to people. In that book, she has lots of different meals that you can rotate between. Uh, don't stick with just one meal because it's not necessarily balanced, but when you rotate between meals, you will over time balance uh, nu nutrients for your dog. Also, Planet Paws has some really incredible recipes for a very, very low price. And 
everything you buy from Planet Paws goes to their pet nonprofit. So all of that will be linked in the description below. But in general, a four to one ratio of cooked ground turkey to pumpkin or cooked ground turkey to sweet potato is my go-to after the bone broth fast or goat's milk fast that I give my dog for 12 to 24 hours. So in a nutshell, that is the diarrhea protocol for dogs. If you have any questions, please make sure you are commenting down below. Or if you just wanna let me know you're here, let me know what's going on with you and your dog, I would love to hear from you. Also linked in the description below, the very first link is going to be to my Patreon. We have a really close knit family over there on Patreon. You get exclusive content, extra content, you get behind the scenes, first look at content, all the wonderful things. So make sure you are checking that out. You can join for as little as a dollar a month and it helps me to continue to bring content like this to you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, content like this goes live on both YouTube and Rumble. And if you are not already on Rumble, I highly recommend you do so. So check the links in the description. I will have my Rumble linked in the description if you are not currently watching this video there. Thank you so much for being here. Give some extra love to your pets from me. Until next time, bye guys.